analyst. Alexander, we appreciate you coming on uh, the program. The Russian jet, we know, came down on the Syrian side of the border. In your opinion, how likely is it that it crossed the Turkish border before uh, the crash? We're hearing from Ankara that it did. We're hearing from the, minister, the Ministry of Defence here in Russia that it did not categorically do that. Well, Russia has no interest in breaching Turkish airspace. And even if the, in, on the remote possibility that something like that happened, it would, it would clearly be uh, something that wasn't on purpose. Uh, so in any case, Turkey, to say the least, overreacted, uh, knowing very well how serious the consequences would be. So we need to think about what were the motives of Turkey for doing this. Uh, just a few days ago, the Security Council brought a resolution on the fight, united fight against terrorism specifically mentioning ISIL and Al-Qaeda and all related terrorist organizations, which meant it called for the entire world to fight against the terrorists, which were clearly identified. So why is Turkey shooting at a key member of this anti-terrorist, in fact, leading member of this anti-terrorist uh, coalition? This is the question that must be answered. Well, that's what I want to say to you. Turkey says it's taking a tougher stance against the Islamic State, apparently, and yet now, as we're hearing uh, just a couple of hours ago, it downs a jet of a country waging a war on terrorism in the region. Just your thoughts on that, Alexander? Uh, well, uh, the question is, uh, we may never find out, of course, is whether Turkey did this by itself, or whether it got a green light from someone who is not interested in a successful anti-terror coalition. We may take a few wild guesses as to who that might be, a country strong enough to tell Turkey to do something like this. But we know very well that for the past two years, three years, the Western states have not answered Russia's calls for a united front against terrorism. So this may be, in fact, a somewhat disguised attempt at sabotaging a uh, potential uh, common front against terrorism, meaning some forces in the West just don't want uh, to, to have a united front against the terrorists, which they helped to create in the first place. This is something that must come to anyone's mind uh, when you see something like this happen, because this is absolutely ridiculous. It, this serves no purpose in the anti-terror campaign. On the contrary, this is something that could prove to be a very big obstacle toward making a united anti-terrorist front. Well, we should just confirm that it's Ankara who said they uh, took down the plane that they say was flying over Turkish airspace. Um, Ankara has been long accused of profiting from ISIL's illegal oil trade. Is it a mere coincidence that the Russian plane was down now, do you think, after Russia put its focus, as we were just speaking about, you might have heard with uh, Ilya Petrenko here, uh, its focus on dis disrupting Islamic State's oil infrastructure, which we know makes ISIL the richest terrorist organization in the world? Well, it was certainly a convenient uh, time for this to have happened, because we know it's an open secret that Turkey has been profiting from the illicit trade by ISIL uh, of oil extracted from Syria. In fact, uh, Mujahideen from all over the world that come to uh, Syria and Iraq to fight against the governments there, uh, cross many of them cross through Turkey. That whole border is just not controlled. And in fact, you know, Turkey has been a beneficiary of all this financially and strategically because they've been declared them, declared themselves as being opposed to Assad, meaning the legal government of Syria, since 2012. And really, Turkey is probably not want, does not want to uh, uh, renounce all these profits that are pouring into its budget illegally, or its uh, companies, uh, people close to the Turkish establishment, etc. But once again, uh, is it worth it if you're against the terrorists, which you say you are, uh, publicly, uh, what do you want to accomplish uh, by this? You, there is no way the terrorists, it is well known, they don't have an air force. 
So there is no mystery. If a plane is flying close to your border, it's definitely not a terrorist airplane. It can only be either a Syrian airplane of the, of the Syrian government or a Russian airplane, uh, meaning you are deliberately uh, taking the side of terrorists by doing this. And I suppose that's going to be the main talking point when the, uh, the top diplomats of the two countries meet. What political consequences could this now have in Russian-Turkish relations, do you believe? Well, uh, Russia is probably going to weigh the, um, the odds, the, you know, the, the, the pros and cons of uh, its own reaction, because Russia has been working very close with Turkey over the past few years, especially in the past year uh, of some very important energy projects, specifically a gas pipeline that's supposed to go uh, to uh, Europe uh, through Turkey. Uh, and once again, this is something that was not well received in Western capitals, and they would just love for, uh, for something to happen to disrupt Turkish-Russian uh, uh, relations, spe specifically uh, concerning energy flows. So once again, is Russia going to allow this sort of uh, major incident to uh, disrupt very big geopolitical plans, which are related to its own relations, not just with Turkey, but with Europe as well. On the other hand, as a big power, just as a sovereign state, you can't ignore someone downing your plane. So I'm sure that Russia is going to ask for an explanation. But I think that Russia will, as always, be open to some sort of a, a good logical explanation and some sort of uh, compensation or at least uh, an announcement uh, or a statement from the Turkish side saying that they regret that this happened. But, you know, it's a very difficult situation and whoever did it knew very well the problems that this would cause. Well, you mentioned logic there. Russian and American Air Forces have coordinated their flights in the region in order to avoid situations uh, like this one, which of course makes sense. but. Why is there no coordination of flights between Russia and Turkey? Once again, that's a very good question. Uh, well, Turkey really doesn't want that because Turkey is interested, for one, when they did when they did militarily intervene in Syria, it's been against the Kurds. The Kurds are the main problem for, for Turkey, and yet the Kurds are one of the key elements in the fight against ISIL. Uh, on the ground, you have Syrian forces, government forces, and you have the, the Kurdish forces, which are really, you know, hard to replace. You don't have a replacement for them right now. And yet Turkey has been concentrating a majority of its own military moves in Syria against the Kurds, not against ISIL. So, you know, once again, we see you know, the paradoxical situation in which Turkey is. And, uh, you know, Turkey, of course, claims that it's fighting against terrorists, but we know its main stated purpose is to remove the Assad government and to prevent the Kurds from forming an autonomy in uh, Syria along the border with Turkey because you know, once again they're afraid of what that would the effect that would have on, on their own Kurdish population inside Turkey. So Turkey has to walk a tightrope once again but it's not playing with open cards and that's a big problem not just for everyone else but for Turkey itself. Alexander Pavic, political analyst, thank you very much for coming on RT International and sharing your thoughts with us this hour. Yeah, let's get a check on more of our breaking news this hour. A second story, in fact, in a busy hour. A group of journalists in Syria have come under shell fire in the north of Latakia province. There you can see uh, on your map, quite near as well, the Turkish border. Our